The Blindfolded Queen. Gandhari, the princess of Gandhara, was known for her piety and devotion. She chose to blindfold herself upon marrying Dhritarashtra, the blind king of Hastinapur. This act of self-sacrifice became symbolic of her unwavering loyalty and love for her husband. Gandhari became a central figure in the Mahabharata, not for her political influence, but for her unwavering moral compass and her deep maternal love for her hundred sons. Her sons, the Kauravas, were locked in a bitter feud with their cousins, the Pandavas. Gandhari always advocated for peace and reconciliation. She pleaded with her sons to choose the path of Dharma or righteousness, but her pleas fell on deaf ears. The flames of hatred and jealousy had consumed her sons entirely. Gandhari's heart ached for her children, but she also recognized the inherent injustice of their actions. Torn between a mother's love and a queen's duty, Gandhari found herself standing on the precipice of a tragedy she could not avert. The Kurukshetra War, a cataclysmic battle that shook the very foundations of Bharat, raged for 18 long days. Gandhari, cloaked in her sorrow and her blindfold, felt the tremors of each fallen warrior. Every cry of agony, every dying breath echoed in her heart. As the war reached its devastating climax, Gandhari was left with nothing but the chilling silence of a battlefield littered with the corpses of her sons. She had lost all hundred of her sons. Her heart, a vessel overflowing with grief, threatened to crack under the weight of her sorrow. The sight of her sons, broken and lifeless, was more than she could bear. She wanted to scream, to rage against the injustice of it all. But all that escaped her lips were soft sobs, a mother's lament for her lost children. Amidst the pervasive despair, Krishna approached Gandhari. He had been instrumental in the Pandavas' victory, a fact that intensified Gandhari's anguish. She saw him as both a charioteer and a strategist who had played a part in her son's demise. I offer my condolences, Gandhari. The pain of losing one's children is unfathomable. But remember, this war was a necessary battle for dharma. Life and death are part of the eternal cycle. Krishna offered his condolences, his words laced with understanding and sorrow. He spoke of dharma, of the necessity of the war, of the cyclical nature of life and death. But Gandhari, blinded by grief, could not comprehend his words. His presence, a stark reminder of her loss, ignited a firestorm of emotions within her. Anger, resentment, and a profound sense of injustice surged through her veins. In that moment of raw vulnerability, Gandhari's grief transformed into a potent curse, ready to be unleashed upon the world. Gandhari, her voice trembling with the force of her sorrow, accused Krishna of not doing enough to stop the war. She blamed him for the carnage, for the deaths of her sons, for her unbearable pain. Her words, heavy with grief and fury, pierced through the air. You could have stopped this war, Krishna, but you chose not to. You were indifferent to our suffering. Eyes filled with tears, she pointed her finger at Krishna. Her voice, usually gentle and calm, resonated with the power of a wounded lioness. I curse you, Krishna. You shall witness the destruction of your own kin. You will feel the same pain and helplessness that I feel. And with a heart shattered by grief, Gandhari cursed Krishna. Her curse was not a vengeful act, but a mother's anguished cry, a desperate attempt to make sense of the senseless. Section 5. The Weight of the Curse, Krishna's Acceptance. Krishna listened to Gandhari's curse with quiet dignity. I understand the depth of her pain, the raw agony that fuels her words. I see not a vengeful woman, but a grieving mother. Though he had the power to deflect the curse, he chose to accept it. He knew that the curse was not merely a consequence of Gandhari's fury, but a manifestation of a grander cosmic play, a necessary tragedy in the ebb and flow of time. He accepted it as the consequence of his role in the Kurukshetra War, a burden he was destined to bear. With a heavy heart, I acknowledge the curse. I know that the cycle of karma is implacable, that every action, even one undertaken with the best intentions, has its consequences. My acceptance is not an act of defeat, but a testament to my understanding of the divine order. Section 6, Years of Peace, A Fleeting Respite 
Following the Kurukshetra War, a period of relative peace descended upon the land. The Pandavas, guided by Dharma and aided by Krishna's counsel, ushered in an era of prosperity and justice. It seemed that Gandhari's curse was but a distant echo, a fading whisper of a mother's pain. With Krishna's guidance, we have established a righteous kingdom. Peace and justice prevail. Krishna, ever the strategist and diplomat, helped Yudhishthira establish a righteous kingdom. He worked tirelessly to heal the wounds of war and unite a fractured kingdom. For a while, it seemed as if the curse would be forgotten, lost in the annals of time. However, the curse, like a seed buried deep within the earth, lies dormant, waiting for the right conditions to sprout and bear its bitter fruit. The spectre of Gandhari's curse lingered, a constant reminder that even in times of peace, the echoes of past sorrows could not be entirely silenced. Section 7, Signs of Doom, Omens and Portents. As the years passed, subtle signs of unrest began to surface. Ominous omens appeared, casting long shadows over the apparent tranquility. Sages and seers, privy to the language of the cosmos, began to predict a great calamity, a cataclysmic event that would shake the very foundations of the Yadava clan. Whispers of impending doom spread through the corridors of Dwarka, the magnificent city of the Yadavas. The sea, usually calm and bountiful, turned restless and unpredictable. Unexplained events, strange and disquieting, filled the hearts of the people with unease. The Yadavas, once known for their valour and unity, seemed to be gripped by a strange madness. Internal discord began to fester, old rivalries resurfaced, and a sense of foreboding settled over the once joyous city. The curse, long dormant, was beginning to stir. Section 8, the Yadava Fratricide, a prophecy fulfilled. The curse of Gandhari reached its terrifying crescendo 36 years after the Kurukshetra War. A trivial altercation between the Yadava youths escalated into a full-blown fratricidal conflict. Consumed by a blind fury, they turned on each other, their weapons tasting the blood of their own kin. The once unbreakable bonds of kinship were shattered, replaced by a savage bloodlust. The streets of Dwarka ran red with the blood of brothers, fathers and sons. The prophecy was fulfilling itself, each blow a testament to the potency of Gandhari's curse. I watched in horror as my own kin, the mighty Yadavas, destroyed themselves. My heart ached as I witnessed the fulfilment of Gandhari's curse. The city of Dwarka, once a beacon of prosperity, echoed with the cries of the dying and the lamentations of the living. Section 9. Krishna's Demise. The curse takes hold. As the carnage subsided, only a handful of Yadavas remained, their spirits broken, their hearts heavy with remorse. Krishna, weary from the weight of the curse and the pain of witnessing the destruction of his clan, retreated to the forest. It was there, under the shade of a banyan tree, that a hunter, mistaking Krishna's foot for a deer, fatally wounded him with an arrow. Grief-stricken upon realizing my mistake, I begged for forgiveness. I absolve you, knowing that this too is part of the divine plan. With his mortal body succumbing to the injury, Krishna, the divine strategist, the charioteer of Arjuna, the architect of Dharma, breathed his last. The curse had reached its devastating conclusion, leaving behind a trail of sorrow and a profound silence in its wake. Section 10. Reflections on Fate. The legacy of Gandhari's curse. The tale of Gandhari's curse serves as a chilling reminder of the intricate interplay of fate, free will and human emotions in shaping destiny. It compels us to contemplate the ramifications of our actions, the enduring power of grief and the profound impact of a mother's sorrow. I, a symbol of unwavering devotion and sacrifice, highlight the devastating consequences of unchecked grief and the futility of vengeance. And I, an embodiment of divinity, showcase the acceptance of one's destined path, even when it is paved with sorrow and sacrifice. The curse of Gandhari stands as a testament to the potent forces that shape human lives and the intricate tapestry of fate, karma and free will. It serves as a timeless reminder that even in the grand narrative of life, sorrow and loss are integral threads. 
woven into the very fabric of our existence.